Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've made, Lord, and we thank you for your word now, and as we open it, we pray that you would open our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirit, Lord, to receive what you have for us. We pray that you use Pastor Uzi now to encourage all of us, Lord, whatever trials or struggles or even joys that we're celebrating, Lord, we just, we give it all to you this morning. We ask that now in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Well, guys, if you want to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And we're just going to pick up at verse 17. We, got, we, we actually ended at verse 17 and 18 last week, but I have to continue the thought. So for those of you that weren't with us, this is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. And they're, like, we, like I mentioned before, they're in a place spiritually that we would call um, the Las Vegas of the ancient world. Okay, I mean, Sin City is, in, in fact, in that day, if you called someone a Corinthian, it was like saying, you know, you Las Vegasite or something. I, I don't know. You, you from a real, you know, it wasn't a compliment. Let me just put it that way. It was, it was actually used as a term that people would call people like a, you know, you're, you're a dirty scoundrel or a dirty, you know, perverted person or something to call them a Corinthian. And so spiritually we saw, as we reviewed this um, background to this church, they were in a spiritually dark place. But I mentioned that all you need is a little bit of light in a really dark room. It's amazing. You know, I learned this from Keone, our youth leader, when he was with us. He, he would take his little cell phone and not even turn on the flashlight app, just hit the front screen when it was dark at night in the house to get down to the bathroom. You have to go down a couple sets of stairs in our house from the lanai. So he was sleeping on the lanai and I would see this little soft glow, you know, and hear the soft footsteps. And it was him with his flashlight just just touching the front screen and using it as a light. And I was thinking, you know, that's pretty smart, man. I should have thought of that. But then, then I found out my phone has a little thing. You swipe and you touch it and it turns on the, the camera light and makes a real flashlight, you know, bright. But you don't need that much brightness, do you? When it's, when it's just, you need enough to see to get by. And that's, this little church, it wasn't known for being the most powerful church, the most, you know, like superstar, rock star folks. They, were, they had problems. But, but they were a light in a really dark place spiritually. So God was using them. And Paul is writing to them and he's telling them, last week we went over how they had slipped into a bit of a, a problem. Personality cult, we'd call it today. They, there were some saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Peter, I'm of Apollos, you know. They, they're saying, you know, I'm a follower of these different guys. And, and Paul said, wait a minute, I didn't get crucified for you. You know, did Peter die for you? We didn't, we're not the ones that our blood was shed for you. It was Christ. And so let's get the focus off of the guys. You know how some churches are all about the, the, the guy up front. Around here, you guys know it's not, right? Because today, in fact, today you get to find out how I got qualified to be in the ministry because it's the same qualifications that Paul uses in the scripture. So I'll show you in just a minute. But, but Paul is telling them, the simplicity of the gospel, the gospel message is really simple. It's that Christ came and, be, and he was the, the lamb, the perfect lamb of God that takes away what? How many sins? The sins of the whole world. He paid the price that was required by God for sin to be paid for. Now, remember, you guys, you, any of you that are familiar with the Old Testament where they had all these rules about if you did a certain sin, you had to get two turtle doves. If you, got a, you did a bigger sin, you had to get an oxen. You got another sin that was a lamb, you know, or a ram. Or, and, man, the Jews, it would have been a bummer. I would have been slaying animals, like, every week just to keep up with, you know, all the stuff that you, you do this wrong, that wrong. It would be like, oh, here I am. I'm back, Lord, another sacrifice. And, but some people wonder why were all those sacrifices required? And we're told that in the book of Hebrews that it was a foreshadowing of the greater sacrifice that God would make when he would provide himself a lamb. And, and it was prophesied through Abraham. When Abraham went up on the mountain with his son, the Lord said, go to this mount what I show you. And he takes him to the mount of, 
of Moriah, the mountain range, and he takes him to a specific spot and he tells him, take your son and make an altar and, and, and offer him as a sacrifice. And right when, remember, Abraham did it. This is what amazes me. You guys read the story, right? He takes his son Isaac and he raises his hand to, to slay his own son. And I, I always wonder how come Isaac laid there, but Isaac, we're told, was a type of Christ. He was a foreshadow. He was, the Jews love these stories with types and shadows that show truths of, on this earthly plane of things in the heavenlies. And so Abraham, representing God, is taking his knife and getting ready to kill his own son as a sacrifice. And then the Lord stops Abraham and says, Stop. You, 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 your heart is revealed. You know, like you passed the test. But then he says, Um... Over there, and in the thicket, this happens all the time. In the thicket, caught by its horns was what? A ram. And so he says, take that and offer that instead. So he offers the ram, and then he says something really particular in the book of Genesis. He says, and thus it shall be said, or, you know, spoken for the future. Jehovah Jireh. That's what we just sang this morning. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord God will presently, continuously always provide but he said jehovah jireh god will provide himself a lamb a lamb not a ram he didn't go jehovah has provided in the past tense in hebrew he said jehovah will provide himself a lamb in the mount of the lord it shall be provided he prophesied it's interesting that the mount of moriah that mountain range. There's a little hill on that mountain range, really significant to us Christians today. Do you know what hill it is? Some of you Bible students know this. Golgotha. That's the Hebrew name. It's called Calvary in the Latin. It's the hill on which Jesus was crucified. It's on the very mountain range where this test with Abraham and his son Isaac took place. It was all to foreshadow what God would do when he would provide his son. Remember when John the Baptist showed up? He said, behold, the, the something of God which takes away the sins of, what do you call him? The lamb. The lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. There he is. That's the one. That's what all the story is about. I mean, boiled down in a nutshell, Jesus became the sacrifice for our sins. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.